Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to the Card Closet. Thanks for joining me for another episode. I noticed when I was going through my box of slabs that there have been a variety of different types of companies that have sold baseball cards as a part of their product. And especially in the early, early days, baseball cards were just a kind of a throw-in to the product to try to get you to buy it. So I am going to walk through my slabs and show you some samples of the different types of products that baseball cards have been added to in order to sell them. So first of all, we're all well aware of tobacco products, cigarettes being sold early 1900s, very early 1900s using baseball cards. And we're all familiar with Piedmont, which was in the T206 set. There are also a number of different backs to the T06 of different tobacco companies that were also putting their name on the back of these T206s. Recruit Little Cigars is another one that advertised on baseball cards to sell their tobacco product. They especially were prevalent in the T207 brown background set. Another one was Sweet Caporal, Sweet Caporal, which uh, was a cigarette company that put their name on the back of baseball cards and sold their cards along with their tobacco product. There were probably more than a dozen different tobacco companies that did this, but these were the three that I have slabs of. Along that same time frame in the early, early 1900s, there were games, card games, that uh, became baseball cards. I don't think they were intended to be baseball cards, but they were card games which became baseball cards. For example, the Polo Grounds game that had a picture of the Polo Grounds on the back there. The Tom Barker game. It's another one. Fan Craze is another game. Be interesting to look up and see how you play these different games. And then the last one that I have a sample of is National Game. And these are all 1904 to 1913 when these different sets were produced, these card games. Shortly after this time frame, we get into the 1920s, and we got the emergence of the Carmel companies. And the two biggies were American Carmel, which as you can see is out of Lancaster and York, Pennsylvania. National Carmel and American Carmel were the big two. 1921-1922 were their two big years, but they also had a an issue in 1910, American Carmel Dead. In that uh, E91 set. So from Carmel's, we'll move into Carmel Corn. So Cracker Jack. Rookheim Brothers and Eckstein, Brooklyn, New York. Hit their Cracker Jack product. That's a should be a very familiar looking set to you. Then uh, one interesting year was 1916. 
1916, a bunch of different companies, a couple dozen different companies used the same images to pitch their product on the back. So one of the famous ones is the Sporting News. Some of those cards have different numbers on them between the different backs. Famous and Bar, which is actually St. Louis Foremost Boys Clothes Store. <laughs> Olive Local 6th and 7th Streets. Olive Locust 6th and 7th Streets. There's also uh, some other clothing stores. I think Boston store was one. I don't have a slab of that. But there's several different clothiers. Um, the same thing happened in 1917, although not as many companies did it. But uh, Collins McCarthy is a well-known candy company at the time. And the images on the fronts of their cards were used by other types of companies as well. I happen to have one slab here, and it is Wheel Baking Company in New Orleans. I have looked up some of these addresses. You know, these are kind of almost like business cards in a way back then. I have looked up some of these addresses that these companies display on their cards, and almost to a card or to a company, they're no longer there. If the address is still there, it's a big bright shiny office building there now instead. I know there was also a Fleischmann's Bakery in addition to Wheel Bakery. There were in the early 20s there were some sets that had blank backs and these are the strip cards. I've showed this one before. But these cards were produced out of dispenser machines similar to a tape dispenser you would insert your money and you'd pull out this strip of cards and it would stop after X number of players and you'd have to like tear it off like you tear off a piece of scotch tape so some of these cards have a jagged edge to them there's also been chocolate companies I showed this Bagur chocolate the other day and I did find out that that's actually a Cuban chocolate issue. Another chocolate company was Nielsen's. Nielsen's Big League Bars. And Nielsen's did a couple of sets in the 21, 22. After chocolate companies we move to exhibits and exhibits were produced uh, by a vending machine company called exhibits and these machines were found at carnivals and fairs and outdoor parks public amusement places and you put a coin in and out would come this card and this if it wasn't for the exhibits brand there would be a lot of holes in the 1920s for those of us that collect team sets because a good chunk of the 20s they're the the only game in town is exhibits cards and they kept doing these up into the 50s and 60s one company that actually just produced cards which was kind of ahead of its time. There might have been other companies that did the same thing, but in 1929, this company called Cashin came along and they just produced cards. In fact, they, they produced them not in packs like we're used to seeing today, but they produced them in uh, set pack set boxes. So you, if you bought one, you bought them all. That's 1929 Cashin. In the 1940s, we had a company called 
M.P. and Company that put out a set in 1943. And uh, to help pitch their products, there's no real indication on the back of them, you know, what kind of product it is. Uh, but they, I looked them up, and they're actually a company that sold um, supplies for, like, carnivals and for, you know, uh, shows and things like that. So they were a supply company that put out a baseball set, which is really nice because 1943 was a war year, and there are not many other cards to be found in 1943. Burke Ross was around for a couple of years, 1951 and 52. Uh, Burke Ross, there's a little bit of a disagreement um, when I did some research on what these cards were used for or what products they helped pitch. There are some indications that they were sold uh, in little packs of cards um, wrapped and they cost a penny, uh, but then Popcorn companies started taking these cards and inserting them in their bags of popcorn to help sell their popcorn. So a lot of these cards are going to be stained. So yeah, even popcorn. And then, of course, the biggie that we're all used to is the gum era. There have been a ton of gum companies um, selling their products. Uh, so, Batter Up is a gum company. You've probably seen those punch out cards before. National Chickle is a gum company. They produce the Diamond Stars. Uh, the National Chickle Fine Pen Premiums are also one of theirs. Gaudi actually says Gaudi Gum Company on them. Gaudi was a big brand in the 1930s. I'm sure you all know that. Another gum company is Playball. And the company is actually called Gum Inc. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Playball was around from 1939 to 1941, helping sell their gum product. And then, of course, Bowman. Uh, as you can see on the bottom line there, Bowman Gum Incorporated. Bowman was around uh, 48 through 55 and was one of the main brands those years. So Bowman uh, got resurrected in 1989. And then, of course, Tops, which does not give any indication that they're a gum company but they are. Yeah, they started in 1952 and are still going today. Um, one, one interesting thing about Tops was that they got a patent on the act of selling gum with baseball cards. So somewhere along the line, Tops changed from a gum company selling cards with their gum to a card company selling gum with their cards. And they patented that idea of having gum with your cards. So if you were around in 1981 when Don Russ and Fleer started production, you'll know that they had gum in them that first year, but Tops took them to court with their patent. And so that's why for most of the 80s, Fleer had stickers in their packs instead of gum. And that's why Don Russ had those puzzle pieces in their packs instead of gum because they weren't legally allowed to put the gum in there. So hope you enjoyed that walk through the different types of products that have used baseball cards as an incentive for people to buy their products. There's a lot more than these. These were the ones that I had represented in my slap stack. So hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and again thanks for joining me. Bye.